Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you some common Mantaflow problems that people have been having and how to fix them. I've gotten so many comments of people asking why Mantaflow is not working properly and in this video I'll be showing you how to fix some of those issues. In this tutorial I used a circle to emit fluid into our scene. Now when I was using this version of Blender it was in the beta. With the official release, now flat objects don't really work too well. As you can see here, I have a flow object that's just a plane, and we're going to go ahead and bake this in. I'll stop it right there, and I'll restart and play it, and we can see nothing is coming out. So how to fix this is what we need to do is add some thickness to this plane. Now you could select it, go into edit mode, and extrude it down, or you can go over to the flow settings over in the flow source. We can turn the surface emission up to a value of about 0.8. The surface emission basically gives some thickness to the plane and now it will emit fluid into our scene. Now if I select the domain, free the data and bake this in, and now we can see we have some fluid in our scene and now it is working properly. Another reason why your simulation might not be working is because of the flow object being too small. In this simulation we have a flow object right here that's pretty small emitting fluid into our scene. If we bake this in, restart, and play it nothing is shooting out of the fluid. But if we were to select it and scale it up a little bit by hitting S, X, X, scaling it up something like this, then hitting S and Z, scaling it up that way, we'll select our domain, free it, bake it back in, we'll stop it there, and now we have some fluid in our scene just by scaling up the flow object. Now let's talk about collisions. If your object is completely flat, the fluid will pass right through it, as you can see right here. Now, the reason for this is because of the same reason as the flow object. You can't emit fluid or smoke from a flat plane. What you need to do is select it, go over to the surface thickness, we'll bring this up to a value of 1, and now if we select our domain, free the data, bake it back in, and now if we play this, we can see it's working properly and it's colliding with the plane. Let's say you wanted to fill a cup full of fluid. Well, to do that, you can add in a cylinder. If this is completely flat though, it's not gonna work. The surface thickness is at zero, and if I play my simulation, it is not working. So what we need to do is just the same thing. Select the collision object, set the surface thickness up to a value of about 0.7, and then we can select our objects, free the data, bake this in, scroll down underneath the mesh and bake this in as well. Now if we restart and play this, we can see it is colliding with the cylinder and it's working properly and filling up the cup. So make sure if you have a collision object that is flat like this one, make sure you bring the surface thickness up just a little bit. Now let's say your collision object does have some thickness, but it's still not working properly. If I play this simulation, you will notice our fluid is passing right through our collision. The reason for this is because the normals are inverted. If I select my object, go into edit mode, and to see the normals, you can go over to this menu, turn on normals and bring up the size, you will see that the normals are pointed in the wrong direction. The faces right here are pointing on the inside. If I go into wireframe, you can see they're pointed on the inside, and that is not what we want. We want the normals to be pointing in the other direction. To fix this, press A once or twice to make sure everything is selected, hit Shift and N, and that will invert the normals and now you can see they're pointed in the right direction and now this will work properly. If I select my domain, free the data and bake it back in. Now once we play this we can see it is colliding with the surface of the collision and it is working properly this time. So make sure your normals are pointed in the right direction and it should work. And since we're on the topic of collisions, let's talk about flow objects inside collision objects. Here we have a simulation of just a sphere moving around, and we have another sphere inside it with a geometry liquid setting. If we were to bake this in right now, and we'll stop it right about there, we'll restart and play it, nothing is working, the fluid is not showing up. And you might think to select the sphere and bring up the surface thickness, but that's not going to work either. The reason this is not working is because the simulation is treating this sphere as a completely solid object. If you remember what we talked about just a couple seconds ago with the normals, we need to invert the normals so that the inside is empty and the simulation treats it as empty. 
To do this, go into edit mode and we can see the normals are pointed in the outer direction. If we press shift N and open up this panel here and flip them to the inside, now it will treat it as an empty object that the inside is empty with air and now the fluid will be able to simulate. From there, we need to turn up the surface thickness. So let's go with a value of about 0.7. And now if we select our object, free the data and bake it in, now we can see we have some fluid in our scene. We have another problem though, is that some of the particles are going through the mesh. As you can see there, they're falling through and landing on the ground. An easy fix for this is to turn up the time steps maximum and minimum values. What these do is it calculates a certain amount of times every single frame, and the higher you turn this up to, the more it will calculate and the more accurate it will be. But then again, the longer it will take to bake. So let's bring this up to a value of 10 for the maximum and a minimum value of eight. Now, if we bake this in, we can see it is going a lot slower, but now none of the particles should go through the mesh. Now, if we play our simulation, we can see this is working properly and nothing is going through as you can see there. Using this method, you can create some really cool animations. And while we're on the topic of time steps maximum and minimum, let's talk about how that changes the simulation. In this example, we can see I've created a obstacle course with a particle simulation and with the time steps maximum and minimum values down to one. If we play this, we can see some of the particles are going straight through the collisions and not taking into account those collisions at all. To fix this, we need to select our domain, free the data and turn up the maximum and minimum values. Let's go with seven and then we'll go with four. We'll bake this in. And once the bake is done, we can play our simulation and this is what it looks like. As you can see, none of the particles are going through the collisions anymore and it's working properly. So sometimes that's all you need to change is the time steps, maximum and minimum values. Another problem that I have found recently is sometimes the simulation data gets mixed up. What I have here is a basic simulation of just a flow object uh, shooting smoke into the air. If I was to create a new blender scene without clicking free data, it will take that old simulation data into our new scene. Down here we can see a cache folder and this is where the data is stored. I'm going to press control N and add in a new general scene and don't save. I'll create this real quick just by adding in another cube, scale it up. This will be our domain and I'll select domain right here. And once I do that, we can see the old simulation data is in our new simulation. And we can see here I have a baked data. To really show what this is doing is I'll select my flow object, I'll move it over to the side, fluid, set the type over to flow. Now, if I was to bake this in by selecting our domain, just move it a little bit that way, I'll click on bake data. Now, if I restart and play it, we can see this is not working properly. It's not taking into account this flow object and it's doing some really weird things. To fix this, we need to free the data so it gets rid of all the other simulation and then we can click on bake data and now this will work properly with this new simulation. So sometimes all you need to do is bake in a little bit of the simulation, free it and then bake it again and it should work properly. And finally, the last thing that we'll talk about is to remember to bake in everything. Here I have a simulation, it's just the default settings. This should work properly, but as you can see here, if I play it, nothing is showing up. The no smoke is being emitted. The reason for this is because we need to scroll down underneath the noise and bake this in before we can see the smoke. If you uncheck this, you will be able to see your simulation as you can see here. But if this is turned on, you need to bake this in before you can see the smoke. If you don't want to click on both of these buttons, what you can do is scroll down underneath the cache and change the type over to final. What this will do is it will have a bake all button and everything that you've set up here, the adaptive domain, the noise, the guides, everything. All you have to do is click bake all and it will bake everything in your simulation. So that is also pretty handy if you don't want to have to go through every single panel and click bake. This will just bake in everything all at once. So there you go. That is some of the problems that I have run into and some other people have run into as well. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you in any way, I would love to hear about it. So make sure you tell me down in the comments.
If you have suggestions for other Mansiflow tutorials or other tutorials in general, I would love to hear about it as well, so make sure to comment. Thanks again for watching. If you want to see another video, click right here, and I will see you guys in the next one.